So how do we take care of these changes? We can assist the patient's breathing by simply applying more ventilation through a bag and mask or through uh, intubating the patient and using a ventilator. And we can increase the minute ventilation very easily through that process. We can allow the patient to breathe spontaneously with a reduced minute ventilation and allow the CO2 to rise somewhat. This is generally not a problem, at least in relatively healthy people and for sh relatively short periods of time. We try to avoid this in older people or people who have uh, cardiovascular problems which may be unstable because a rising uh, CO2 in that uh, situation uh, may cause instability. Under very unusual circumstances, the anesthesiologist may give a respiratory uh, stimulant. But I can say that in the nearly 40 years I've been in practice, I've never done this. And in fact, I fear it because when you do use respiratory stimulants, there's a high probability of increasing cardiac oxygen demand, and also it can lead to seizures and un other unexplained and unexpected uh, events. You must carefully monitor the patient's expired carbon dioxide levels and adjust ventilation to maintain a tolerated level of carbon dioxide. And this is basically what we all do. So this slide is to try to indicate to you the different effects that drugs have upon uh, the uh, oxygen or, or carbon dioxide stimulation of breathing at the, at the respiratory center. The first line shows what happens if there's slight increase in arterial CO2 in a normal person who's awake. You can see that even a very minor change in PCO2 results in a marked increase in minute ventilation as we try to blow off the CO2 and improve breathing levels. With opiates, we tend to push this curve to the right, so there continues to be a response to increasing CO2, but the response is late and slow. When we add in inhalation an, uh, agents, we further depress the response, not only shifting it further to the right, but decreasing the slope as well, so that there is a delay in response to rising CO2 and an inadequate response to a rising CO2.